So good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to talk here about uh, some of our research uh, focusing on the super resolution by dielectrical micro lens. So um, I'm from Bangor University in the UK. So it's a small university, <clears throat> and it's based in um, one of the corner here, based in North Wales. So it's about three and a half hour train to London and uh, around one and a half hours to Manchester. So it's a small university with a very beautiful scene. So um, in my talk, I will uh, focus on this uh, super resolution related to the micro lens. So I will start talking about some uh, theoretical aspects we know in the past, uh, maybe around nine or 10 years. And then uh, I will show how the field was developed uh, from the beginning to today. And then we're talking about some application and then with a summary of this technique. <clears throat> um, I think we hear a nice summary about this supernatural microscopy already. So we we'll just give it. So what we want to see is some um, new approach about uh, label free. So one is like the super oscillation learn, uh, which is developed by Nuclear Group in Southampton. And uh, there's others like Time Reversal, Maxwell Fish Eye, and also this Microsphere uh, particular I'm talking about. So classically, if we deal with a, <coughs> a big uh, glass ball lens, we normally use this ray tracing. And uh, so what we can see, usually we have a, a certain kind of focal lens. Uh, this forming a caustic uh, here. So this one, uh, usually you have some focal lens and uh, you can use in this classical formula to calculate a roughly spot size and optimal enhancement and so on. Um, one point people um, only realize around the year 2000 is that uh, what happens if you ask yourself the lens was shrinking in size from a big ball lens and then when it was shrinking the size, what happens is this focus point, which initially in the far field, we're, we're drawing closer, closer to the ball line surface. So at some size scale, actually the focus can be just beneath the particle. So here is one <coughs> example of calculation you can see for polystyrene particles and on the UV lighting source, because uh, this is the initial discovery people use for nanopatterning. So after calculation, you can see the main peak is actually exactly at the bottom of the surface. And if you calculate the um, focus spot size um, along the um, close polarizing direction, you will achieve the uh, super resolution beneath, um, beneath uh, lambda by two. And in this case, it's actually uh, more or less close to lambda to n resolution we can achieve. And it has been used for <coughs> uh, applications in laser nanofabrication, I think since 2000 when people discovered it. And it also formed the main part of my PhD when I doing my PhD in Singapore group. So we focus on studying different kind of microsphere in different sizes, different materials, uh, what kind of holes you can drill in. So we apply to generate large area nano holes. We also uh, use to generate nano bumpers on glass surface because the focus can be focused slightly beneath the glass top of surface, and you will have millions of this nano uh, focus automatically. So uh, that's mainly we focus on the nano patterning. We, so we haven't thought about nano imaging in, in, in the years. So um, how the things coming from to uh, nano imaging is um, this is actually the table uh, showing. The brief history is around the year 2000, the Singapore group, when they're doing the laser cleaning project, they found there are another holes after cleaning the sample. You always have another holes beneath. The bodies started to calculate this phenomenon and they soon realized, okay, this is uh, some very small uh, nano hole focusing uh, particle lens. Uh, in 2004, uh, USA group actually, uh, they um, coined this terminology called the photonic nanojet in, in a or uh, optical express paper without knowing the Singapore's work. So the terminology photonic nanojet is actually formed in 2004, and uh, the work actually started around to, uh, 2000 or something. So wider range of um, applications since 2000, you can see patterning, Raman, data study, sanction, lots of papers were published. 
Um, the initial idea of using this microspheres to uh, for another imaging is when in year two thousand year two thousand eight I, I went to Southampton University in Nicolet Group, uh, doing my uh, second postdoc at the time, and uh, the project is on EPSRC a uh, nanoscope uh, project, uh, on using the super oscillation concept. So uh, naturally, because of my whole past uh, experience is with microspheres, so I started thinking of what it can be used for nano imaging. So um, 2009, I went back to Manchester as a lecturer then, and then started to pursue uh, how this one can be developed. So we did some of the uh, initial experiments with microsphere on top of nano chip, and then we can see very small things, and we published the first paper in the field. And this field actually uh, was um, tried by many groups um, uh, since then. So we also find the patterns, and about the year 2016, we tried to uh, overcome the first Generation in this microsphere uh, lends some uh, drawbacks. So, we want to get a la uh, larger field of views, and we start using uh, chemical methods to synthesize the particle lens by ourselves. And we also tried looking at the uh, natural candidate like a spider silk and the center bacterial for sugar laser imaging. Uh, we also pursued to uh, integrate it to a level to chip systems. Um, we also see some, uh, this is a live cell. Uh, as the super lines by some other group, but I think it's nice work, so I mentioned it. And lastly, like this year, we published a paper on how to use this super lens for nanopattern in a controlled way. Um, <clears throat> so I will start with some uh, very fundamental uh, theoretical pictures to show you how this focus was evolution when you uh, particle size from small to big. So when the particle is very small, it looks like a dipole. So uh, the beam was coming from the bottom to top. But you can see when the particle is small, it's like a dipole radiation. Particle become a slightly bigger. It's two or the spot move to the bottom, and it has started to form a focus. And this focus picture is actually simplified. The reality is uh, actually is quite complicated. Here is a movie showing uh, uh, the beam coming from top, a bottom from top, and here is a particle and. Uh, uh, increase the particle wavelength. Uh, is a fixed, uh, if we fix the wavelengths and you're thinking about the particle size was increasing, and the, this, this focus move is showing what happens. So when it's a very small dipole, increase size going to the bottom, and you will see this actually has the flipping effect. Uh, flipping effect. This is optical resonance by this uh, spherical cavity. You can see in some regions about uh, between 10, 20 or something, this flipping is actually quite strong. Just indicating there is a very strong optical resonance when you change some parameters in your systems. And this flipping phenomenon becomes less and less, and when it becomes very big, so it, it becomes more like a general uh, ball lens you are playing with, and the focus becomes more and more stable. So what is interesting is in these flicking regions, when, you, uh, when you're working in these flicking regions, actually there is uh, many modes you can excite it. If you're using white light, actually you cover broadband and lots of wavelengths there, you can you can exciting many different kinds of modes simultaneously. So as an example here, uh, if we use the uh, sphere and you're using a white light, at least you will excite it simultaneously, simultaneously three different modes. And most of people is familiar with this second one. Okay, this is uh, well, what are we talking about the photonic nanojet? And uh, you will find that this actually photonic nanojet only gives you weak, uh, weak super resolution. So something the maximum you could achieve is a uh, lambda divided by 2n. So for glass, glass bead, normally the best you can achieve is uh, lambda by 3. Uh, what we later discovered is this one, this new mode, what we call the super resonance. And this is actually the focus of the um, what are we thinking in the future for this technology? So this super resonance actually, is, uh, we we published a paper only very last year. So after the first, uh, uh, we discovered only quite recently. When you do very um, careful calculation, if you're scanning all the parameters, you will find uh, at a, at a certain um, parameter, you will only excite this very strong super resonance, like a symmetrical two hot spot on the top and the bottom. And uh, this enhancement is much, much more than the photonic nanojet mode. 
uh, usually for PNG mode, you only have several hundred enhancement. This one, you can go 40K or 50K easily. Uh, the key is you need to match the wavelength exactly to the uh, resonance conditions. So here are two papers we just published. Uh, this, in this mode, the resolution can easily go beyond lambda to 2M, okay, which is very beautiful. And also we, we did some uh, listened, uh, this is unpublished result, very new. So we, we analysis what is the uh, local wave vector following the idea of superoscillation. You will see in this super resonance mode, actually the uh, local wave vector can be very, very strong in some region, actually underneath the particle, but at some new regions. Actually, you can around uh, 100, 100 K zeros. So this means you could, as a potential, you can improve the resolution by 100 times compared into from 200 nanometer to 2 nanometer. Only this is only the theory. Um, and uh, if you calculate what is the um, resolution, actually is a complex picture. Okay, if you're thinking about experiments, you're using a wide light, actually you excite multiple modes. And uh, this picture shows the calculation for N1.5 glass beads. And you will see many, many oscillations. And these oscillations are in fact the super resonance mode. Uh, but in experiments, uh, if you want to observe that, you will need a very, very narrow uh, laser beam, single with a beam in order to excite it. But the most experiments we've done in the field is actually broadband. So actually you will have this um, average effect. So basically for N1.5, you can see for X direction, if you want to achieve 0 0.5 half wavelength resolutions, you will need some uh, Q factor around below 20 in order to have the average the super resolution, okay? And Y direction could be a little, little bit less strict about maybe 40, and Z direction about five in order to achieve the super resolution. So a guidance here is that if you're working with glass beads, uh, the, the main tendency, if, you, if you're using smaller particle, you will get generally average the better resolution in your experiments. And if you have a good average resolution below the classical diffraction limit, you need less Q than about 20 in the X and Y direction. Okay, and I would emphasize this is only for the glass bead, okay, uh, just for as an example. So you need to calculate slightly different in order to select the different particles. For N.5, so basically you need something less than five micron uh, in order to have a good resolution, ideally less than four and uh, wavelength 600. So this is something you can play with if you want to have this uh, average resolution below the classical. And then remember, we always have this multiple excitation mode by the white light. So it's always the average effect. So um, we believe actually the future, how we can utilize all this highly oscillating uh, super resonance mode, and in here you can have the very, very small uh, resolutions. Uh, okay, so resolution beyond uh, lambda to n is possible if we assess the super resonance mode. Uh, the first experience we published is around nine, around uh, almost uh, 10 years now in 2011. So it's a very simple experiment. Take a glass bead along uh, what do we want, around 4.5 something micrometer, and then you put on top of, uh, of the object surface. And then you, you use some, um, a little bit high numerical NA. Normally you need something uh, above 0 0.6 at least. Then you will have some uh, reasonable results to have some uh, super resolution effect. And this one is some um, quick demonstration of the grating and also AO, and then also the blue ray disc. And uh, this one is actually we uh, stick the early stage, we stick this bead to a glass pipette with a single group, so to move in that. Uh, if we combine with confocal, you can uh, improve it slightly uh, better because this is the uh, Olympus confocal microscope, 405 nanometers, is a laser beam source, is a coherent beam irradiation. So when you have two particles, you have actually the strong interference effect, which you need to avoid. So basically in, in this case, the best one is just a single particle mode. And then you can, you can see this, um, uh, this line here. Uh, we rotated the sample to confirm it's not, not the artifacts, it's actually the true image you can reflect it, captured by the uh, confocal plus uh, particle. 
So uh, since that, um, when I moved to Bangor, so uh, I tried to push the technology further into direction. One is the resolution enhancement. How can we in enhance the technology further? And this was done by adding some pupil mask. Uh, we, we do some uh, own chemical synthesis using like a metal material approach. And we try to uh, improve the easy, easy, easy use of this technology and try to explore some new applications. So we like develop an idea to embed it in a, a flexible sheet and put it on a sample. And we, we, we tried the scanning and we tried like looking at the spider silk and we integrated it into the chip. And also recently we applied for another patterning actually. So this is one of the idea we did at the early stage. We actually embedded this uh, high index particles uh, into the um, uh, uh, PDMS sheet and we put on, on the nano chip. And this one is also taken with the confocal. Uh, you can see quite clear just for the nano we can form. So some of the technique we developed try to um, form them as a ray to increase the imaging uh, area when we try to uh, imagine the big examples. Uh, some other efforts like uh, how to integrate uh, together with a conventional lens. Uh, we print, we make a sugar lens sheet and print some adapter and adapting to the systems. Uh, but in here is actually the early stage development. The system is in contacting mode during the scanning. Uh, so we added some oil here. We, we, we have a little bit of trouble in stitching the uh, imaging in the early stage. So this is some early development. And we, we also see some AD5, AD5 virus, uh, which is given by Corbido from uh, Cardiff University. It sent us this virus so we can see more or less clearly under this image. Uh, this is not our development, it's one of the, our collaborators. So uh, it's one of the existing collaborators. He uh, is a group in Shenyang in China uh, who expert, uh, whose uh, expertise in micro robots. So they're doing very well in the AFM scanning system. And this is this paper is one of the best engineering in, around this field using micro lines for imaging. Uh, you can see what they achieved. This is a conventional uh, SEM picture, AFM and microsphere. What is interesting if you compare SEM and the microsphere image, you can see XEM is only the top surface. Uh, electronics uh, information. Uh, microsphere, you can see more, a little bit beneath the uh, top surface because this is optical mean. So um, the beautiful side, I think, is we stitch this one to um, to the to the uh, AFM cantilever. And what is important is actually this paper's supplementary is actually very important. So if you have an uh, interest in this technology, read the supplementary very, very carefully. There are lots of tricks how you can make the image much more beautiful, uh, the contrast much higher. So one, two point, one is the slightly inclined illumination is very important and also using a pink hole uh, to have a partial illumination. So all the detail is actually in this paper. We actually in our experiment found the same trick. So if you want, if you want to do with this technique, read this paper very carefully. Okay, current, the other market, the other two companies formed, uh, not by me, okay, it's by uh, mainly our initial paper collaborator, so Professor Ling Li from Manchester University, Professor Ming Hui Hong from Singapore. So Professor Ling Li, uh, they are using the BTG particle, uh, barium titanium oxide, high index and embedded in a, a glue design. And uh, Professor Hong from Singapore, <laughs> he, um, uh, he, I think they uh, for, formed a um, work together with Opto, Opto Sigma from Japan. They recently launched this product. Uh, so uh, my, my personal view is actually uh, both of them are not very perfect in terms of the performance. They're still um, not performing very good. Uh, actually, you can build your own, in my view. So how can you build a view? Actually, we published a paper. We decided to publish a paper, uh, how you view can make it just uh, early, early this year. So one of the approach is actually very simple. <clears throat> so you can using a design we call the PCN, planar convex microsphere. So planar convex is mainly you're just taking a conventional planar convex lens. Okay, so one side is plane, another side is this convex interface. And what you do is actually you spin coding some adhesive layer uh, like UV glue, and then you uh, try to attach. 
for us, we're using a micro robot that so we can precise attach to this position. And this is what you like, okay? And with some um, uh, with some uh, objective lines, actually, uh, if you have some objective lines which you can open by yourself, then you can attach this piece inside just to form a one uh, of your lens. So this is a paper is quite a detailed description how you can make it. And then this is what it looks like of our systems. So basically, um, why we use this convex interface is in fact, we, um, we found it's very important how, how to monitor the distance bec uh, between the, this microsphere to the under substrate. Okay, if you have this no side monitoring systems, and it's very difficult actually to uh, control it uh, precisely. So we found that this side monitoring, this path is very important. Actually, we are able to monitoring on the CCD how this one was approached to the sample surface, and we can we can control it more precisely. So this uh, convex interface helps a lot. Uh, this is some of the imaging performance by this self-built. You can see very clearly with this kind of Blu-ray disc, and you can also um, easily to see um, uh, some nano chips. Uh, the calibrated resolution is lambda to three. Okay, so um, when 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 people publish this field in the early stage, we're just using the um, single uh, smallest of features. And uh, uh, actually, um, I did, we had a con communication with Colin Shepard, and then they say, "Oh, this is a long way you define it." Um, and uh, actually, in the all the later publications, we do follow the suggestion to look calibrated. So you're using the point 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 spread function to fix um, to find out what is the uh, equivalent point spread functions. Okay, so like this one, if you can see like this 100 nanometer, we does not claim this is 100 nanometer resolution. You need to do this calculation and you fit it. And, and this calibrated around uh, lambda to three in the far field. So it is poor than the, even our initial papers. But when you have the working distance, looking at this design, actually you, you, you having some working distance around three to four micron. Okay, so the super resolution we achieved with less than four micro working distance, and it disappear if your working distance longer than the four micrometers. And because it's more or less is something in the far field regions, uh, actually you didn't achieve the best resolution like the super resonance mode. We're talking about very strong. It's something you only happen in the contacting mode. So there's some uh, dilemma in, in this kind of, of design. If you want to achieve commercial design, you possibly need to go do uh, far field scanning mode, and then you will lose the best resolution which you have in the contacting mode. So something needed to be done uh, in the future. Um, we also apply this PCM lens. So GCM lens is actually pretty simple. If you want to for imaging, you needed to combine with objective lens, which 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 I just shown. If you just wanted to making a small holes, you don't need objective lens. You just just need a very conventional planar convex lens and with a micro. Sophia on tip, and it's sufficient for, for working as a new focusing lens, allows you to easily achieve some uh, nano patterning. So this is something where you, after we develop this PCM lens, without a combination to objective lens, we're just shooting a laser, and you will see uh, this is very easy to achieve around 300 nanometer. This is around the femto, and this is around uh, and the lasers. So we, we are able to write in now and to control the pattern using this PCM uh, super lens, actually. So resolution about 300 nanometer over a large area. So this is something, a good development for particle lens patterning because previously people can only usually using particles spread on top of the surface. You generate a large area whole array and there is no kind of control of this um, controlled writing. So we, we, we have achieved it. The, the, the left thing I was talking about, something like this metamaterial, is something we found the, the uh, conventional particle lines like uh, polystyrene, uh, silica, or uh, even this, uh, the field of view or the contrast is not that high. So we're looking for, uh, first thing is going to the high index material, and also we try to control uh, manufacture in a way as we like. And uh, uh, occasionally we try to study, understand what's the difference with, between homogeneous slab and the nanoparticle made slab. 
And what we found is some uh, interesting phenomenon is that this uh, nanoparticle may, slab may support in, uh, a, a new channel of uh, evanescent wave decoupling from your sample surface, and it may contribute to the enhance of the uh, of your resolutions. So this all beam is made by uh, what a technique we call the nanosolid fluid. It's basically uh, nanoparticles around 15 nanometer and with some chemical uh, solutions, and then we squeeze it out through a, a needle or, or, or some air, air gel, air gel uh, spreader, and you will achieve different type of shapes or something. And we tested it actually is showing better improve the uh, improve the performance to previous polystyrene uh, particles or any other particle BGG particle people are using. So this is a brulee. Actually, we can see the black dot, which is a little bit data bit on the surface. And we can see the chip very, very easily and clearly, so about 60 nanometer gap under the um, optical microscope directly. And this is something uh, actually we tested for uh, an easiest example. We take 60 nanometer diameter polystyrene particle, we put on some grating surface, and then we imaging with this um, metal material uh, TiO2 lens. And you can see, although very not clear, still optimizing, but you can distinguish them easily. Uh, so we are currently have two projects um, founded by Royal Society, uh, mainly ex exchange project. So my idea is try to uh, use the power of this lens, but uh, our difficulty is really hard to scan it in a very proper way uh, to do a, to do a very good way. So this is the paper I mentioned. I think is the best paper in the field who do you very good in micro robot engineering. So we are collaborating with them. Due to pandemic, we only have one visit so far. So some very promising result, we found this particle also synthesis. We initially thought that maybe this nanoparticle cannot stick very strong and it could be broken through scanning or touch with a sample. But uh, after we try, we found this is pretty good for scanning purpose as well. We just got another new funding last month funded by uh, with um, a Russian group. Um, in Moscow State University, uh, who is actually the one of the key manufacturer of STM machine in in in, uh, in Russia, so he is very well experienced in STM imaging system. So we try to combining these two lens and also STM together, so in one one single systems. So we put the particle from the bottom and then the STM on top. So we want to measure the sample by two uh, modality in the same time. Um, we also did some work in how a uh, general public could access. So it's something we did with the uh, spider silk. The general spider silk in your back garden normally is around four to five micrometer diameter. Uh, what, what are we trying in our lab? We found it can magnify nano, nano things, but the view window is a little bit too small. So we approached a professor in Oxford University Zoology Department, very famous in um, he, he, he actually has a lab on the top of his building, greenhouse, to have this uh, golden, golden spot web, and they control it to make this spider to be around eight microns. So it's uh, about double size of general spider silk we get from a backyard, and then we take some images, uh, which showing can be used for imaging. So this is just for public interest. Also, we apply this one for a surface as a narrow lens. You can see it can be used for laser nano ablation as well. Some field as us, uh, we also did try uh, involved in a European project, try to um, incorporate this micro bead on top of some micro channels. And uh, um, actually the project is almost closed, but it's very challenging this project later on we found because more or less the super resolution ex existing knew the surface of the bottom of the surface. And how can you ensure the, the sample like a virus or cell flowing inside the channel bring to the new field of the particle? We found it's a very, very trendy. Um, and anyway, uh, through some sample, we get some uh, interesting results. So this is a PDMS bounded with a particle on top of some microfluidic channels for detection. And we are able to see for some, some of the design, we can see the Easter cell actually climbing uh, through the micro channel wall. So when particle was sitting just on top of the side wall of the channel, we can see the moving effect. And uh, we also see something inside like an Easter cell with something, this kind of structure, which we don't know what, what, what are they yet so far. 
And this is uh, some other group of words, but I quickly mentioned it. So uh, other people also working at the like, uh, they use the tip and then they can trapping a chain of the tra trapping another of microsphere here. And then they can take these microspheres for nano imaging. Uh, this is from one Chinese group. Uh, you, they can see very small nano letters as well. And also they, they used it for nano trapping. So if you uh, focus it, you have a photonic nano jet here, you have another nanoparticles, then you can also have the, this trapping uh, pretty small nanoparticles. Others also use this uh, microsphere as a way to enhance the uh, spectroscopic applications. So this is the uh, coquillian anti stoichiometric spectroscopy. So initially without the microsphere, you, can, you cannot resolve these patterns. And uh, with microsphere, you can see the spatial resolution is improved. Uh, also, people have been used it for um, endoscopy for super resolution. This is for not biological, but industry application with some uh, stiff probe. And you found it with a uh, microscope, and you can see uh, much, much more improvement in the spatial resolution. Also, something uh, was done in the wide light interferometry. So this is something also in the XY direction, you can improve easily to about 100 feature size. Okay, I think that's all mainly. And the, the last thing is just the information. I'm currently editing a special intro of this photonic nanogel with deadline um, by March of 30th. So if you have any, 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 any work related to this field, I welcome you to uh, submit to us. And the final very quick summary and our look. I think the super resolution in here is actually you can achieve with the uh, microspheres, spider silk, high index nano bead, and more. Uh, more developed, I expect, in the direction of uh, integrated device and just sensing detection and non linear microscopy. Um, what we think is that this super resonance effect we uh, recently discovered, I think, is uh, should be the main reasons why. Uh, we achieve very strong um, strong super resolution for some samples. So one of, one, one of the same people, uh, sometimes I will receive email from the group say, oh, I cannot, I, I can, uh, why my samples doesn't show very strong resolutions? Um, so there's a, quite a number of reasons. So one is the um, substrate also has some effect. Illumination, as I said in the previous, uh, it's very strong. In fact, illumination is very important. It's actually, it's not emphasis in most review papers, uh, but actually, um, in the uh, in the paper published by scanning the Sunyang group, and also in recent reviews, I, I do have emphasis this uh, illumination is a very important uh, problem. So uh, currently, we're mainly using this average the super resolution effect. So I think there is a way, um, there is a potential if we can modulate the incident beam and just exciting those super resonance mode in a more controlled way. We have a huge potential to bring this to a ne next big through in this micro lens super imaging. But I think it's mainly um, limited to the new field. Okay, so we are expecting we will have some uh, breakthrough in the new future. So finally, I want to acknowledge some funding support from uh, my funding audience in the UK. Uh, okay, I think that's all from my talk. Thank you.